So this is my painting that I commissioned uh, by a local Ukrainian artist as they were kind of struggling through the winter. It is Ilya Ripon's uh, depiction of the death of the Tsarevich at the hands of Ivan the Terrible, and it is relevant uh, in so many different ways, as many of you who have followed me heretofore probably already know, uh, but I'll it, trust me, you'll know the relevance as I go along. Uh, so I am recording this at about noon on Monday uh, after the weekend that was, and I have delayed on doing this because I was waiting to see if any of those um, who had made arrangements in light of the Lukashenko agreement, by the way, Sasha doesn't do anything that his master Vova tell, you know, doesn't tell him to do. If he was anything more than a telephone operator between Prigozhin and Vladimir Putin, I'd be stunned. Because, of course, you know, Putin couldn't talk directly to Prigozhin. Um, so... Uh, I've been waiting to see if any of it was actually implemented, and that would be Shoigu and Gerasimov, the kind of head of the Russian military, the, the head of the Ministry of Defense, and then, of course, the, the chief of staff uh, in the Russian uh, uh, power, military power structure, would actually uh, adhere to this so-called uh, Lukashenko agreement uh, and either resign or go into some form of, of retirement. That has not happened. What we have seen this morning on Monday is that Shoigu has actually put forward a video of him, and it's probably old, but it doesn't matter. They put it out with a very clear message that, uh, you know, Shoigu was still there. Uh, it is him in military uniform going around checking inspection sites, looking at maps, things like that. So very much the soldier in contrast with Prigozhin's kind of rabid dog, kind of beware of me, I'm, I'm violent and aggressive and, and all the rest of it, uh, and I will not be denied. Uh, anyhow, so uh, he's put that out. We have not heard a response from uh, Prigozhin. Uh, we have not seen Karasimov, and we haven't seen tellingly, I think, Vladimir Putin since, um, uh, what was that, Saturday morning when he addressed the nation. Uh, so where is everybody else? I think what is happening is they are all going to their various corners. The Tsar will maybe uh, upon occasion uh, speak down from on high, but we are what I think witnessing is all the very disparate factions of which the Ministry of Defense is only just one. You have the Kadyrovs, you have Prigozhin, you have all sorts of different factions within the oligarchy and those who supported or were forced to support Vladimir Putin. Um, kind of waiting to see which way the 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 the, the shoe, you know where the shoe drops so that they can they can uh, uh, adjust adjust accordingly because make no doubt about it this is about the end of the Putin era everybody sees it and they're positioning themselves for what comes after and I. I take this position mainly because maybe it's it's my experience in the 90s in, in Russia. Um, because when I was in Moscow, there was this very tumultuous period where people were being proposed uh, as a successor for Yeltsin. And there were all these power struggles, struggles happening. So I got to see this in rapid succession. Keep in mind, we haven't seen a change in the Kremlin in, in 23 years. So I got to see it in quick succession in the 90s where powers would rise and fall and camps would be established. And so the 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 way Russia fights its political struggles, I saw kind of in a hyper uh, environment. Uh, I think we will see Prigozhin and, and, and uh, Shoigu and all, as I say, all the boyers will go to their corners. They will, they will start struggling amongst themselves. And ultimately, I think what this is about is who gets blamed for the war uh, and why the war went so badly and why, frankly, they lost the war. And um, it can't be the czar because, of course, then then the center is no longer strong and the, the, the gravity, everything starts spinning off. And that's what Russians fear the most. Um, you know, but, but Putin, I think, is done because of a variety of reasons. He's no longer strong. He's not... He's not dictating things. Uh, the environment is being dictated to him, and that is a bad look for a czar. Um, also, he he broke his promise uh, to the Russian people. His promise was that he would not, would, that Russia would not go through the chaos of the 90s again. Um, if you are over 40 and you are a Moscovite, you have seen tanks deployed on the streets in earnest, not some sort of, you know, victory day parade, but in earnest three times in your life. 
That is hugely disruptive. 91, the fall of the Soviet Union. 93, Yeltsin, uh, you know, puts tanks on the, on the streets of Moscow to control the Duma. And now this. That is three times in your life that, that your entire world is hanging on a knife's edge. And that ain't good. So Putin is done. Uh, Putin has lost Ukraine, which, you know, czars for centuries have struggled to maintain their colony here, and Ukrainians have fought against it. Putin lost. Putin has lost Ukraine, and that is historically huge. But for the, for the meantime, somebody has to be blamed for the war, and it can't be Putin himself, because again, the whole structure is built on him being the, the, the sun and the moon and everything circles around him. So who will it be? Uh, and, you know, ultimately, no matter who it's going to be, I think it's going to be, uh, th that will be the kingmaker. They will not assume the throne in the Kremlin. They will be the one who, um, there will be a power struggle. Whoever comes out of that power struggle will say, okay, boss, we know you got lied to, or, uh, you know, things got out of hand because Prigozhin is such a, a, a violent character and he, he brought us to the brink of civil war. One way or the other, somebody's going to be blamed and it ain't going to be Putin. But regardless, that person, while he might not take the seat, he will be the one that is deciding who ultimately does. I, I feel strongly about that. Um, so, you know, whoever wins this current struggle in the Boyars, ultimately the clock is still ticking on Putin. Putin will go down in exile, He will, you know, in, into Sochi, or he'll be, he'll be seen as the kind of uh, caretaker guy, while whoever wins this current struggle between all these different uh, power structures within Russia, um, they, uh, they will be the ones that, that make that decision. So what we're looking at here is not a civil war, uh, necessarily not a coup, certainly, but I think what we're looking at is people um, uh, positioning themselves for a post-Putin era. Ultimately, Putin is done. Let's just accept that. And if it's if that's something you can't believe in, well, I'm staking my reputation on it. But regardless, at uh, basically 12 here on Monday morning, um, this is where we are. I didn't want to delay any longer because, you know, this is a fast-moving thing. And while I'm still not doing breaking news, I do want to bring you context. So, so watch what's happening. All right? Vova, okay, is going to kill the thing that he pro proclaims to love so much. Read up on Ilya Repin, fascinating character. So I'll keep an eye on things. I have a, I have a package that I have, a, a, like a, an actual news report that I'm putting together, edited thing. I don't know if you guys prefer that or not, or if apples and oranges, some you know, like like that as well. But I, I've got this thing that I need to get through, but. Events are moving quickly, and I want to keep on top of them, and I want to give you context as best I can. Keep watching this space. If I have to, I'll come back on later today. But I'm watching uh, uh, for things as uh, this is not over. This is far from over. Um, and uh, it, it, it is the inevitable end of Putin. And as a side note, thankfully for me, because I know which side I'm on, it means good things for Ukraine. So, Slava Ukraina. Geroim Slava.